Now I've done a few bits of product photography, um, some with one light, some with several lights, some with flashes, some with content light, but today we're going to show you how to do it with one light. Keep it nice and simple, nice and cheap. I wanted to go for a really clean, professional look for this piece. So I wanted to go for all black, I wanted it to look like it was, I didn't want it to look like it was sat on anything, so the idea is that it looks like it's just in this black abyss and all you can see is the reflection so what i did was i used a black backdrop now this can be a black bed sheet a black wall i just happen to have a big pop out black backdrop so i used that clipped it onto a light stand hung that up no problem then what we used was this uh, which is just a big piece of black acrylic should be able to get a nice reflection of my face if i do it properly Oh, oh, look at that. It's two of me. <laughs> you see my chins? <laughs> no, of course not. That's why I've got a beard. <laughs> then, obviously, you've got your bottle. Make sure that that's been wiped down as best you can. Make sure you get rid of all the fingerprints. Luckily, luckily with this bottle, the top here has like a plastic on it. So I was able to maneuver it and move it once it had been wiped over. Now the one bit I did have to do to the glass is just remove the back label so that that's nice and clean just so any light then goes straight through and you don't get any dark patches when you're moving your light around you don't get any nasty reflections or any funny patterns in your glass you get a nice clear beam of light straight through so just make sure you remove that I've got it all off in one as well like a pro bossed it mate I'm not sure what this bit's for next up we had a little whiskey glass, just a little tumbler glass, put it on the side. I was just going to do the bottle in the middle and leave it like that, but I decided to just add the glass just to make it a bit more of a scene. Next, just some fake ice cubes, okay? Now you've got these off Amazon, again, they're like £3.50, not a lot at all. And this with a little bit of water spray, a bit of mist on the glass and on the ice cubes, just really sells it, makes it look that just that little bit more realistic. Now, the whiskey inside the glass, I didn't want to open the bottle and my other bottle of whiskey, I finished. Um, so I didn't have anything else. So what we did was, and this looks disgusting, we made some. So this is, this is my whiskey and all it is is just hot water and then one tea bag, leave it in there, let it just let it just absorb the tea bag, let it leave it for a bit. And then all I did was water it down until I got the color that I wanted. Um, and then I just simply used a bit of that, poured it in, and then you can adjust the color later on in Photoshop to get it the way you want it. Um, I mean, mine, mine turned out all right, actually. It, it wasn't too bad. I'm quite happy with it. I'm happy with my whiskey. Now, when it comes to lighting it, I used a, Young Nuo uh, YN360 light wand. What I did with this is I like to have my camera in fully manual mode and I like to do a bit of a long exposure so I can move the light around a little bit. So it gives it a, it gives it the feel of a bigger source. So I'm moving it around whilst it's on a, I think it was on a two second shutter. And then I had the aperture quite wide open just to make sure that I got everything in shot, all the detail, all the reflection, everything was all nice and in focus. And all I did was, I mean, a two second exposure and then just move the light wand up and down the image just to make it seem like it's a bigger source than what it is, making it appear just a little bit softer. I did have the light wand at like 1% um, because it is quite bright to be honest. And luckily with that wand, you can bring it right down to 1%, uh, which is fantastic. So I did that and was directly behind the bowl, slightly towards the right or the left, and then just move it around a little bit. Use your body or use something else to block it. I used a five-in-one deflector and then just use the black side as a negative fill, 
and just used it to kind of block off the light so it didn't go directly into the camera lens and it just gives a nice sharp white line along the side of the bottle what you want to do is get that on both sides and it just defines that edge on both sides now you want to make sure that your camera is locked down on a tripod and is not going anywhere same with your bottle once everything's set do not move it when you do your composition you want it all to gel nice together you don't want to have any uh, weird ghost in fragments or any weird ghost in effects okay so once you've got your clean line on both sides next we're going to do our overhead now with most product photos i like to do an overhead uh, big soft box straight over the top just looks clean looks nice and is normally the preferred way of uh, lighting a product I get it, not everyone's got the big soft box, not everyone has the powerful lights, not everyone has the C-stand to be able to, you know, mount this big soft box up over a product and over a table. So what we're gonna do instead is, same thing with the light wand, you can change your exposure slightly if you wanna make it a little bit longer of an exposure time so you can move it around, make it a bigger source. But with how powerful the light wand is, it was gonna be way too bright. So what I did instead was used that five in one deflector took the cover off, use it as a diffuser. Now next, what I did was uh, the exact same thing, but this time we added in uh, a bit of foam just underneath. So this is uh, some packing foam that my, uh, my sister's just moved out and uh, she had loads of furniture. So I've had an absolute ton of these. These are great, okay? You can buy them or you can just get them when you order furniture or any packages or anything like that. If you ever see any foam, grab it because as a bounce, as a fill, it's absolutely fantastic. And then if you paint the other side matte black, then you've got a negative fill as well. So what I did was I laid that down on top of the Perspex just to give a bit of a bounce, just to get an even light on the label. You want to make sure that you've got every possible angle for your label just so you've got a nice even light. You don't want any dark patches where you've got to try and photoshop that in and lighten it up afterwards because it's not going to look natural. Uh, always give yourself possibilities when you're doing the edit, okay? Always take more photos than what you need for a composite shot, um, or a composition rather, purely because it just makes your life easier. You get rid of that headache of not having enough. And finally, what you're gonna do is you're gonna move your light around, get a few of the highlights. If you want a highlight on the bottle cap, just make sure you're getting a highlight directly above, maybe slightly behind the bottle, just to get a little bit of a rim light. I also lit the background green to match the bottle. So if it is all lit up green, then I can use the backdrop as well to kind of complement that. Um, if it doesn't, then again, I've got the option. I can turn the background off or I can turn the light inside the bottle off. You know, give yourself those options so you can really play around in the edit. Now, like I said, this is a really, really cheap and simple setup. You can do this wherever you want in your house, in your living room, in your bedroom. You don't need much space at all. And you can do this with a little pocket light. If you don't have a pocket light, use the torch on your phone. If you don't think it's bright enough, then simply just make sure you're using your camera in manual and just do a longer exposure time. It's like light painting, but you don't see the light trails. So now you know everything that we need and you've seen how we've shot it, we'll jump into the computer and see how to put it together and just quickly show you how I like to layer them all and organize my layers and basically make the composition. Okay, so what I've done here is I have put all of my layers into, um, I've organized all my layers and what I've done is I've named them all based on what parts of that image I want to use. Now what I like to do is I like to do this straight after I've finished the shoot. Even if I don't plan on editing that night, what I'll do is I will put them all into layers, name them all, organize them all so it's fresh while it's still fresh in my head and then I'll just save the project and finish it later on. So what we've got here is our green background. There's some bumps in the backdrop. That's from the light stand uh, sticking through, uh, poking through, but I'll remove that later on with some spot removal. And then what I've got here is three different, no, four different, sorry, overheads. Like I said before, it's mainly so that you can have options. So I can click on these overheads and I quite like that one. It's a little bit brighter than what I'd like to go for. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this one on and I'm just going to change the blend mode to lighten 
and then all that's going to do look is just lighten up the parts of the bottle all light and does is takes the brightest part of the images and will let that come through and will let all the darkest parts just fade away so obviously then if I turn that on and off you can see that that's only lighting up the bottle now it is lighting up a little bit of the background so what we like to do here is just put a mask on it and then invert the mask by using command I or control I whichever and then you can paint it back in by going to your paintbrush colour and then using the colour white and white will colour back in um, that layer or that effect okay so you just all you do is just go through paint where you would like that effect to be so me mainly I wanted it to be on this bottle cap I'm just going to go in paint that bottle cap if you can't remember where things are then all you do is you just turn off your mask and then you can see where everything was now for me the only part that I'm worried about at the moment is I like that that top label there this part down here as well where my shadow is so all I'm going to do is just come back down here as well and paint back in my reflection okay now the reason I'm not doing the label is because I've already got a separate shot ready to light up my label and uh, by doing this all you're going to do is you're going to stop all these extra bits of light coming in and it's going to keep the whole image looking nice and crisp uh, we'll add that reflection back in as well actually because I quite like that reflection we can always remove it afterwards if we change our minds and then all you're going to do is you're going to come in press X to change to black or in my case change to black there make your brush just a little bit smaller and then just tidy up your edges after each layer now you could do this at the end but when you're working with about 13 different layers things get really confusing really really quick so it's best to just stay on top of it as you're going along so that, that way it's not going to get too messy okay and that should be that should be it for that layer so the next layer that we're going to do is our overhead bounce so we've got two of these and what this is, this is our, the one for our label. Now I've got that one there, and I've got that one there. Now that one, I quite like what it's done with the, with the deer's head, or the stag's head. But I prefer the label on this one. See, so yeah, I actually quite, although we've used the bounce here for the label, I actually quite like the label on this one instead. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this again bringing it down to lighten and then masking it off inverting that mask and then just coming back in with the white brush and just painting that bottle painting that label back in now that is a little bit bright but what I'll do is I'll just come in later on and uh, I'll just darken it afterwards once I've got everything sorted and then I can sort out my levels then as and when I need to make sure we get all this bit of writing down here because thing is if this is for a product shoot you want to show off the best parts of the bottle or the product that you're capturing for your client or whoever and if they can't read what's on the label then you know you're not doing your job properly so you want to make sure that everyone can see what's on the label everyone can see all the nice features again I'm just going to come in and touch up this part here because this label doesn't quite look as nice as I would like it to I do like this one here because I've got I like the stag's head on this one so again we'll just invert that mask come back in with the white I'm just going to paint that stag's head back in just because that stands out really nice on that bottle okay so now we're able to see that and actually turn that layer on and off to see this same with your other layers you can turn them off and see these as well 
and turn your label off. So now you're able to adjust these individually. And you can already see the bottle starting to take shape. Now we need to separate it from the background. So what we do here is we use our edge light. Now we've got edge light left, which is quite harsh. And then an edge light left, which is quite soft as well. So what I think we'll do is we'll probably start with the edge light left that's soft and just turn that on just so it adds that in there. That actually looks really, really nice. I don't think we're gonna to need to do much to that. Um, what we'll do is we'll just get rid of, instead of inverting it, we'll just go straight to our black and we'll just paint away this big part of the background here because it's been lit by the light that we was using obviously to light the side of our bottle. Now that actually looks really, really nice and has separated it nicely from the background. So now that gives us a nice base layer to come in and use our edge light left. Change that to lighten so we can see what we're working with. And obviously we can actually, instead of dulling down the exposure, we can just bring down the opacity of this. And again, that looks really, really nice. So. I think what we'll do again is just simply come in with our black and just go around the backdrop just to make sure that it's not affecting anything else in our scene. Beautiful, that's lovely that, really, really nice. In fact, I think what we'll do as well is just get rid of the lights, the light on this side, because we don't need to affect the light on this side already because we're going to be lighting that side separately. We want to be able to control those layers. Now we can add our right side in, and then we believe we've got a softer right side as well, just there. So we'll start with this one. Let's just bring it down so it's at the beginning so we can see it a lot easier and work upwards. So again, we're gonna to go to lighten. It's a little bit bright again, so we're just gonna bring that opacity down just so it doesn't overwhelm the image. Add a mask, go into our black, and once again, we're just gonna go over the entire background here. Now, one thing we do need to bear in mind is we still need to light our glass. So we're gonna come in and add a little bit more of a highlight here. See, I quite like how that's lighting up the cap part of the bottle here. So again, just add that mask. Change the blend, load to blend mode to lighten, there we go. But I also really like the fact that it's lit up this whiskey glass down here as well. And if you look here, we're missing some of the reflection, but we have got a shot here that has some of that reflection in there with it. So. What, what we'll do again is just simply repeat the process and it is just a case of working your way through and building the image up bit by bit. It's very nice that, superb. Now we have our overhead glass. Now I've named this glass purely because this is the one that's given us that little highlight on the back and it's also given us a little bit of colour in the whiskey on the uh, in the glass as well. Again, go to lighten so we can see what that's affecting. And we don't want it to affect any of this top part at all. So we come into our mask, we go to black, a nice big brush size, just give it a once over all the way through. Okay, and this Video is getting pretty lengthy, so we're gonna turn it there and leave it there. I'll mess around with the hue now on the back with the green and brighten it up and have a little bit of a play around with that. But apart from that, it's just personal touches then. It's just coloring it and tinkering with it, bit of dodge and burn. So that is how to shoot a product with just one light. If you've enjoyed this video, then please feel free to press subscribe just down below. Click on the bell notification so you can be notified for next week's video. And also there's a big thumbs up just below this video as well. If you can click on that, it really, really helps. Uh, and apart from that, it's all from me. So be creative and make it loud. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.